moment of truth. And the whole assembly process was not very interesting to watch, so I think I'll do a short voiceover over some footage of uh, me assembling everything on what things I've encountered while assembling, what things I would have done a bit differently. This is the solution for the heater core coolant. It's not pretty, but uh, at least it uh, doesn't interfere with uh, the turbos and uh, it should heat up the car for these uh, cold uh, autumn evenings i tried to buy all of the new oem gaskets for the turbos the compressor outlet gaskets are sadly not available anymore at least from the shop that i always buy oem parts so i had to cut uh, these gaskets from this special gasket material but I think it will hold, so now it's time to assemble the turbo side. The assembly process was not as straightforward as I thought, because what I found out quite early in the process is that the order in which I assemble everything really matters. Some parts might hinder access for other parts, or you might find that some parts need to be loose to add a different part. I couldn't add all of the footage of that in the video because it would easily go over 30 minutes because I had to revert some of my progress several times just to move forward. And I figured this out only now because the car was never fully assembled before. There were always some parts of the turbo kit missing. But now I have experience and the next time I will know the correct assembly procedure. Furthermore. I found out quickly that the vast amount of space on the exhaust side was quickly consumed by the turbos and their plumbing. In the end, things like water hose clamp at the pump or power steering pump bolts were quite difficult to reach. One of the biggest struggles was when I was installing the boost pipes and the fan shroud. The boost pipes had to be added to their general area first, but not connected with the silicone couplers so they could be slightly moved. Then the fan shroud needs to be inserted at a specific angle while also trying to push the boost pipes out of the way. Only then the boost pipes can be connected with silicone couplers. Definitely not a very serviceable solution, but in the end it all fits. Lastly, one of the fails was that I bought 50 to 70 mm diameter clamps, which were just about big enough to be able to clamp the silicone connectors. I should have bought, and I will in the future, larger ones so I would not need to struggle putting them on. Overall the turbo kit is looking good. I've learned a lot and the next turbo kit will come out even better. As you can see the purple Lexus is completely assembled and only needs a couple of things before it can start. So I need to test the fuel system to see if it leaks, set the base pressure of the fuel system and I also need to add coolant, I need to add the power steering fluid and I think that's pretty much about it. And it looks like this when fully assembled. The fuel pressure regulator is not mounted solidly yet just because I needed to add the gauge but it will be removed once I set the fuel pressure and yeah, it, the car looks like so, pretty nice. So we started testing the fuel system and to get the fuel pump running we've bypassed and directly connected to the battery. We can show how it goes. And so now the pump is running, back like you. We can see that the, there is a pressure building and we can hear fuel returning. 
and so far there are no leaks we checked all of the connections so I think we're good to go moment of truth At this point in time I decided that the engine was not getting enough fuel and so I went into the settings and changed the amount of fuel the Speduino was providing to the engine during cranking and the result was this. This is the second attempt of starting. I, I have removed the air conditioning tensioner and the belt because we had a suspicion that that might be our source of noise. So let's see if that helps. So I'm in the car, the whole garage smells like gasoline, but it also smells like success. So the engine starts now quite good. What I've actually noticed that even though this car now has uh, much larger injectors by let's say 60% or so, it still runs a bit lean and the fuel pressure is much higher than it was previously. So there is still a lot of tuning left but uh, the car runs and uh, I need to button up a few things and then I can go and try to map the car and that's going to be in the next video